name is Andrew Bain and uh, welcome to Monday Morning Warm Ups. For those of you who are uh, back joining us, great to see you again. And for those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. It's great to see you. Uh, great to see everybody out there. And uh, let's get straight into it with uh, buzzing. <coughs> Terrific. Uh, so nice, easy buzzing exercise to get things moving, focusing on breathing and blowing and a nice, easy buzzing start. Uh, let's move on to poo exercise. So with poo exercise, uh, we start with an eighth note uh, pianissimo. We're just going to play that without articulation. We're going to play eight notes, each one getting longer and louder as we go. And we're going to finish on the ninth note, which will be articulated. Oh. 
Stamp exercise in octaves. So we'll start on uh, horn uh, pitch C, so a concert F in the middle of the state. So as low as you like, if you really like. Great. Uh, repeated notes, repeated note pattern. Thank 
So I think Alex Shuhan, you have something for us this morning from Ithaca. Thank you, Andrew, for the opportunity to share these uh, couple of exercises with all of you. These harmonic series half adjacent half step exercises just explore the aural relationship between, uh, for example, C major and B major, and or the C harmonic series and the B harmonic series for us. And there are really interesting sonic sounds as you explore these. Uh, certainly you can extend this exercise up through higher partials or lower partials as well. And uh, there's some really interesting sounds that you get. And the idea is to just minimize the effort that you're, that you're uh, using here and let your air try to do most of the work. Uh, this is a huge issue for me in my playing, so I'm always trying to find ways of addressing that. And these exercises, while I don't necessarily always sound great playing them, but they definitely help me find ways to improve that aspect of my playing. Cool. Thanks so much. <laughs>
Fantastic. Thank you, Alex. That was really great. Awesome. Really terrific stuff. Uh, let's move on now with repeated note scales. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
So, terrific. Uh, glissandos now. So we play uh, one quarter note straight, one quarter note glissando from, from an F at the bottom of the stave down to middle C on the B flat horn. And then we play another quarter note straight and a quarter note glissando until we reach the F at the bottom. We hold that uh, as a fermata. <laughs> Oh. 
Excellent. Hector number two. today from uh, from the previous uh, days is we're going to do a, a little scale exercise once I find it uh, from uh, James Stan and it's a it's an articulation one it's, it's sort of similar to the repeated repeated note scale uh, pattern that we've um, we've sort of done in the past um, but it's two octaves starting on uh, let's start on um, what are we still going to start on um, pedal C to start with today
So <clears throat> the moment you've all been waiting for, uh, lip trills. <clears throat> so who who uh, has any trouble with lip trills? Anyone have any trouble with lip trills? Anyone have no trouble with lip trills? Oh, good. Yeah, uh, there are some people, it's quite amazing. Some people uh, just don't have problems with lip trills, and it's just a piece of cake. And I wish I was one of those people, but I'm not. I have to do a lot of work. So my idea with lip trills is that if I can play sort of fast over large intervals, as the interval gets smaller, life is going to be easier. So uh, I, I start in, in octaves and try try to and and gradually speed it up. So I come at it from two ends. One end is building up the oscillation from slow to fast, and then I do another drill to to get the literal started. So we're going to do both of those drills uh, today. So we're going to start on um, F horn. Uh, on a middle C over an octave so it's going to sound like and and I'm not too worried about if I if this is too clean or not if that doesn't bother me what what I'm trying to do is just make sure that my air stays really stable throughout this and I'm and I'm feeling this oscillation so <laughs> So, so the idea is to try and stay as compact as possible. That's the idea. We don't want too much movement because as we get closer together, the less movement we make, the faster this lip trill is going to be and the easier it's going to be. So we'll do a couple more in this, um, in this drill. <laughs> because we're going to shrink the intervals. So now we're going to start on a G on the F horn, concert C, and we're going to oscillate to the C above. So.
And the next iteration of this will, will, will crank up the speed even more, if, you, if you're daring. <laughs> And don't worry if you can't do the whatever they were, sex tuplet, 12 tuplet thing. That's fine, that'll come in time. But just make sure that you keep focusing that the airstream stays straight and supported. And that your corners are nice and stable and you'll get this oscillation on either side. But it's really important that we're getting both notes in the center. Often with lip trills, one note will be um, stronger than the other. And we want them both to be as even as possible. Um, <laughs> Great, and then now we shrink the interval even more. <laughs> See, it's getting easier, right? Is it getting easier? I hope, please nod. Yes, easier or harder? If it's getting harder, then I'm doing a terrible job of explaining what we're doing. Uh, and, then, and then, so actually now we get into lip drill. So... So that's basically the breakdown of that drill, and it, uh, it's not some lip drills are not something you want to practice for long blocks of time because they tend to be quite tiring. But the large interval one you can practice quite a lot, and it's just if you're focusing on keeping the airstream straight and nice good stability in your corners. The other drill that um, that, that I tend to do uh, for lip drills is um, it start we, we start in the same uh, register, but. So it's this fast. This is this is designed to get the literal started. So Dayong, Dayong. And then three.
and so on with that. So, so that we're approaching literals from both angles. So from these large intervals slowly and then gradually speeding up and then reducing the size of the interval. And then this beginning part of the trill. Because for me, I know that's my, my biggest problem actually is I, once I get the trill going, it's okay. But actually getting it started is, is, um, is the trick sometimes. Cool. So if there are any questions about that, let us know. Uh, on the Facebook group or in the chat, that's cool. Uh, right, now for something nice and relaxing, we're going to go to the Mark Inoue exercise. So the Mark Inoue exercise is we start on a low G, concert C. We're going to play G with a regular fingering, and then we're going to play the same pitch with the, with the fingering a semitone higher. So... <laughs> Terrific. So uh, obviously that one, uh, we're wanting to try and match the sounds as much as possible, match the pitches as, as much as possible, but it's hard because we're obviously bending the notes. Some great questions on the chat. Um, wider intervals are more challenging. Yes, exactly. And that's the reason for it, to make it, it's basically resistance training. If we can, if we can get the wide intervals feeling okay, then as we get smaller, it's going to feel really easy. Uh, so, uh, oh, Ken, uh, F horn for that, for that one. It makes it a lot easier, the last exercise that we just did. Uh, and Drew, in, in concerts, yes, yeah, sometimes it works when trills, if we start trills a little slower and speed up, but sometimes we just have to get them going. The obvious one that comes to mind is, um, is Mahler, Mahler symphonies. It, it just has to sort of go from the beginning. So, um, it'll depend on context, yeah, and, uh, and your musical uh, decision making. Okay, great. Uh, let's do a little bit of a uh, gooey stamp. <laughs> Thank you. 
Terrific. So uh, when, you, when you're setting up your own routine or your own uh, warm-up uh, exercise platform, however you want to word it, uh, it's good to have these alternating exercises. So something low and maybe loud, something softer and more noodly, some high stuff followed by some lower stuff, so that we're mixing it up. And uh, But you're always trying to ingrain the same habits, the same quality habits. For me, make sure I'm breathing well, make sure I'm feeling nice and open and relaxed with the blowing. Corners nice and forward, and for my my tongue, make sure it's hitting the same spot every time. Uh, so they're the, they're the things that I'm trying to make sure that I embed when I'm when I'm doing my uh, my warm up or my routine. Okay, a uh, little bit of uh, now now that we've done the lip chill thing, the flexibilities are going to be a piece of cake. Uh, so Alan Mann flexibility. <laughs>
So Hector, flexibility. See, lip trills. Fantastic. We've done enough flexibility for today. Uh, before we do, before we do the uh, last one, the elephant, uh, Rupa wants us to take a picture. I think. Yes. Can you guys all just hold up your horns in the screen here and give me a couple seconds? All right. Nice. Everyone got them up. Well, I want to see your faces too, not just horns. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Hang on. I have to turn the page on the Zoom thing. Okay. Again. One, two, three. Awesome. One, two, three. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Good. We'll send, we'll send you a laminated copy uh, in the mail. Yeah. <laughs> as, long, as long as you laminate it yourself, that'll be fine. Okay. Uh, elephant. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, everybody. Uh, great to see everyone. Uh, look forward to seeing you on Wednesday at four o'clock. If not, then we will see you on next Monday. Have a great week. Thanks. Mm -hmm.